Hi, Chris Gell here again with Pinnacle Training Consulting System. So, we've talked a lot about joints and muscles and biomechanics and how to assess some things. Now, I want to look a bit deeper into what we call fascial slings or muscle slings. So, one really um, well known anatomist, or actually from the science center, his name is Tom Myers, came up with a book named Anatomy Trains. And part of the information I'm taking from him and, and using with his giving him a source is um, these four slings, what we call muscle slings or fascial slings. So when we talk about the back again, uh, and there's four of them, one of the slings is called the posterior oblique sling. So when I talk about the posterior oblique, it means on the back, the latissimus dorsi goes from the lats, it comes into the thoracolumbar fascia, and it goes to the opposite side in gluteus medius here. So the right would be from the right lat, crosses over into the thoracomal fascia and goes into the gluteus medius. So that's called the posterior oblique sling. Then we have the anterior oblique sling. So anterior meaning front. It goes from the abdominal wall, um, actually from the obliques into the rectus abdominis, and then goes over to the lateral aspect into the lats or on the posterior aspect of the, of the lats on the opposite side. Conversely, from the outside here, it's going to be the obliques goes into the rectus abdominis, which again remembers from the pubic symphysis, all the way to the xiphoid process, and again wraps around into the, um, again, the lats or the outside. So that's the anterior oblique, and that's the posterior oblique. Then you have what's called the longitudinal oblique. And the longitudinal oblique is a long aspect from the posterior aspect of the, of the thigh. Again, it goes from the glute max, goes in the rectus spinae, and goes into gluteus medius. So again, the erector spinae, gluteus medius, and it into the upper part of the thoracolumbar fascia. And then the fourth, again, they call the um, lateral sling. And the lateral sling, which is on the outside, lateral meaning outside, is the gluteus max, goes into medius, into thoracolumbar fascia, and then up the, the spine. And again, on that right side, that's gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, the thoracolumbar fascia, or in the erector spinae, and go up in the spine. By the way, it also goes down all the way into the peroneals or perineals, which is the outer part of the calf. So you can see that if someone has, let's say, a tight QL, well, on one side, that's going to put them in either into side bending on that one side, which you can see what it does to the hip. That'll make the glute tighter. Conversely, if the glute is tighter and they have a trigger point in the glute and you add tightness in the QL, you're creating compression forces, right, on this right side, which is going to affect with not only moving forward, but the ability to move to the side. Again, I don't think something I see very commonly is a dysfunction in the anterior aspect. Again, it can happen. I, as a physical therapist, see most of my patients, and probably you with your clients, on the posterior aspect. If they have tightness in their lats, they're going to actually be really retracted and depressed, and that'll affect with, again, with a little bit of a flexion. Um, so if you can remember these four slings, which you're getting in your manual, you can see that visual. It'll give you a nice reminder of, of really of where they need to stretch it. They also could benefit, remember, from some body work. Don't forget your massage therapist. Massage therapists are amazing at help restore mobility, not just in how muscles work and move, but with you guys working with your clients as well. In this next section, we'll talk about assessing multifidi, and that's the kind of the second, almost last part of looking at the pelvic girdle and how to create a more or assess um, normal versus abnormal.